All right, hello. So this is our first video for our calculus uh, unit, talking about unit one, limiting continuity, uh, 1.1, finding limits graphically. So limits are really the base of most of the things you'll be talking about in the high school curriculum in regards to calculus. And I guess technically because then when you're going to stuff beyond high school calculus, it's still, the foundations are still here, so limits are really the foundations of everything you're going to talk about when it comes to calculus. So limits graphically is a little nice one to start off with because we can see visually what's really going on here. So we've got a couple different notation um, ideas here. I took this from an old textbook. So we have our limit as x approaches a with that little minus sign right up there. That means the left-hand limit. We're worrying about the left-hand side only. Um, whereas if we have an a with that little plus sign there, then it's a right-hand side limit right there. So we're looking at the right side for that. Uh, and then visually the idea is, so if A is right here, where are we approaching as we come at this line from the left side? Again, we're moving the right direction, but again, it's coming at it from the left side of that line. What is the value right there? What is the Y location for that? Where's the right side limit? Again, there's our A and there's our line. Where are we approaching? We come at it from the right side. Now, if I want it to be from both sides, that's when X approaches A with no plus or no minus. We say the limit as x approaches a is going to be l. The idea is, in order for this to work, in order for this value to have an actual answer, both left and right side limits must be the same. So if we have a situation where left side approaches 2, right side approaches 5, the limit as we approach it from both sides is going to be does not exist because it's not approaching the same number. Whereas if both sides are approaching 2, then the answer would just simply be 2. Very important to recognize, though, limit and value of the function are not the same thing. Because we can get super close to a hole in a graph and have that location be the limit, but it's obviously not the value of the function at that spot. And this will make a little more sense in the next two examples here. So we've got this graph. We're talking about different limits. So for A, limit as x approaches 5, the idea is we go to where 5 is. There is x equals 5. And even though there's a hole there, from both left and right sides, we are approaching the same number. We're both hitting the location of negative 2, the y value. Therefore, the limit is going to approach negative 2. Whereas at x equals negative 3 here, we can see the left side is approaching negative 4, whereas the right side is approaching positive 2. They are not converging together. They're not approaching the same number. So this would be D and E, for it does not exist. They have to be, again, approaching, converging together for the limit to exist there. Now, when you see a little minus sign or a little plus sign, we're talking about only left side or only right side limits. So we don't care if they approach together or not. We care about at negative 6 was my left side. And there's my left side right there. We're approaching 4. At positive 3. So there's no point kind of ran there for positive 3. However, a line is an infinite set of points, so we can kind of just draw our own point right there. And we can see it's converging together at 2. And this is the idea really, while, again, the value and the limit may not necessarily be the same numbers, those are only for like the special locations of holes, gaps, things like that. Whereas most points on the function itself, because it's an infinite set of points creating these lines and these curves, the limit would exist and the value would equal the same thing there. That's the idea of something being continuous, which we'll talk about uh, at the end of this unit. And then following negative 3 from the right side now, so we determined negative 3 did not exist from both left and right, but the right side is converging together. It's approaching the value of 2. All right, so we're going to do another graph just to kind of give you an idea of kind of like how this is going with that. Uh, might not be a bad idea if you kind of like pause figure out your answers right here on your own, and then just kind of compare it to what I'm going to talk about uh, in a second. So we have x approaches 1 from the left side. So 1 is right here. Left side of that would be approaching here, which would be the location of negative 2. doesn't matter that the right side is different because we're only caring about the left side limit. Uh, negative 4 from the right side. So again, there's negative 4. Right side limit, we're approaching right at that whole location, which would be a positive 2. Uh, negative 8, there's a hole there, so there's no value. But left and right side limits are converging together at that location. So that limit's going to be negative 4. All right, at 7, there's a jump there. There's that gap. And since we want both sides, 
they're not converging together at seven, that would be does not exist. And then finally, three does not have a hole or a gap or anything like that. It doesn't even have a point, but it's part of the line, so we can just write our own point there, draw our own point, and we can see they're converging from left and right sides together at six. So that's all the graphical limits are going to be. It's very visual. Uh, just simply making sure they converge together from both left and right hand sides and not have gaps in them like it's occurring at seven or the gap occurring at one. But if we do have gaps and we only care about left side or only right side, we can answer that. Like again, part D, the limit as x approaches seven, is does not exist. If I wanted seven from the left side, that would be positive one. Or seven from the right side, that would be negative seven. It's just that because left and right side are different numbers, that's why it does not exist. All right, so that's your limits with graphs. Uh, most of the limits that we're going to talk about will be algebraic limits, so we'll get into that process with the next set of videos. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.